Greetings fellow travelers and welcome to Zoo Tampa's Africa. Here we'll trek past the beautiful savanna and take a safari ride to Expedition Wild Africa. First up on our trek and near the entrance to the pathway taking us into Africa, we come across the habitat of the African penguin. These birds have a loud, brain, donkey-like call that has earned them the nickname Jackass Penguins. We'll come back and visit them more in a later video. Zoo Tampa is home to four male meerkats, Peabody, Sam, Ralphie, and Ranger. This meerkat family is unique in that there is no alpha female in charge. Past this, we find a very long-lived species of tortoise. The oldest radiated tortoise on record was 188 years old, and this species is expected to be extinct in 20 years, if the current trends of poaching, pet trade, and habitat destruction continues. Next up are three yards housing both Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises. Side-by-side -side yards separate adult and juvenile Galapagos tortoises. As the world's largest tortoise species, the Galapagos weighs only 3 ounces when they hatch. In 30 years time, they will grow to weights of up to 600 pounds. Here is where we can also take part in the up and close Aldabra tortoise signature encounter. Just past the tortoises, we come to a multi-species exhibit housing southern ground hornbill, lowland nialas, and bay dikers. The stripes on the niala's coat help to camouflage them by breaking up their outline, making them harder for predators to see. And while most species of diker are diurnal, bay dikers are nocturnal, searching for food at night and sleeping during the day. Right next door, we find the marabou stork. These birds secure much of their food by scavenging and are attracted to lion kills, domestic stockyards, plowed fields, and rubbish piles. They have been known to feed on adult flamingos. They may associate with herds of large mammals in order to catch insects disturbed by their movements. And these birds have large sacks below their bills. This pouch is used to attract mates and to make noise, not to store food. The African savanna in Zoo Tampa represents a vast horizon of grasses, scattered trees, and shrubs, and is home to animals both large and small. And the wild herbivores and carnivores share this landscape, competing for resources during both dry and rainy seasons. Here we will find a collection of herbivores like the Maasai giraffe, which are the largest of the giraffe subspecies, growing up to 18 feet tall. Hartman's mountain zebras are excellent rock climbers with hardened hooves to aid in climbing. Hartman's mountain zebras are commonly found at play. Types of play include chasing, racing, play fighting, and challenge games. Challenge games usually consist of nose-to-nose -nose contact followed by mutual grooming. We'll also get our first glimpse of the African elephant, which is the largest land animal on Earth, weighing up to six tons. A combined extension of their upper lip and nose, their long trunks are used for communicating, grasping, and squirting water into their mouths. These trunks are able to draw up to three gallons of water in to spray in their mouths for a drink. Sue Tampa offers three signature encounters with these African animals. The Southern White Rhino Backstage offers a chance to go behind the scenes to the rhino barn. We will see those animals up the pathway in a few, as well as the Giraffe Backstage Encounter and the African Elephant Backstage. In all these programs, guests learn how the animal care team utilizes learned behaviors to ensure optimal health and welfare for the animals. At about the halfway point on our trek around the savanna and across from it, we come to an aviary housing silvery-cheeked hornbills. These birds eat fruit, insects, and other birds' eggs. They also have a silvery gray-colored head and a large hollow horn-like beak, both of which lend the birds their name. The beak's edges are serrated so that the bird can tightly grasp its food. Male and female birds form a strong bond and share perennial care of the offspring. Breeding occurs early in the year in northern areas such as Ethiopia and shifts towards the end of the year further south. Elephants live in herds, which are highly organized social groups of 6 to 20 elephants, led and guided by an older female leader called a matriarch. As the leader of the herd, a matriarch will make all the decisions for the herd including what to eat, where to sleep, and where to go. Female elephants stay with the herd for their entire lives, meaning a matriarch acts as a grandmother and or mother to most of the herd members and includes several generations of female relatives. Males will only stay with their family until adolescence, around 14 years old, where they venture out on their own and spend most of their lives alone or with other bulls. 
As well as being the largest land mammal, elephants have the longest gestation period of all animals at 22 months. After the birth, a calf will stay very close to its mother for the first few years, who will nurse her calf for around four years. During this time, infant elephants are milk dependent and cannot live more than a few weeks without milk. Although they do start to eat vegetation at just a few months of age, the progression of elephants mirrors the development of humans, and as elephants are extremely tactile, calves need to be touched every few seconds for reassurance, and often suck on their trunks for comfort, just like babies suck their thumbs. Two other species that we can spot are the Nile lichwi and the Kenya impala. Across from the savannah, we enter Rhino Reserve, home of the Zoo Tampa's crash of southern white rhinos, which consists of one adult male, three adult females, and two young females. These are the most social of all rhino species. They live in crashes or herds of up to 14 animals, mostly female, as most adult bulls are solitary. They spend about half the day eating, a third of the day resting, and love wallowing in mud holes to cool down. The white rhino is quick and agile and can run up to 30 miles per hour from an almost standing start. White rhinos can live to be up to 40 to 50 years old. Up the pathway, we come across painted dogs. With their close-knit family structure, they communicate through high, squeaky calls and can reach speeds of over 40 miles per hour and are very successful hunters. Pups always eat first, even before the alpha dogs. Pygmy hippos spend more time on the land than their larger relatives, so they are more likely to dehydrate. Like other hippos, their skin produces a fluid commonly known as blood sweat to protect it from the sun. These are solitary animals and will actively try to avoid other pygmy hippos, with the exception being for mating and raising young. If two do come in contact, they simply ignore each other. Pygmy hippos are nocturnal animals. They hide in dense forests and bushes in the swamps and near streams throughout the day and only come out at night to find food. They eat leaves, ferns, herbs, and fallen fruits. Due to poaching, their numbers have dwindled to about 2,000 animals left in the wild. The fascinating shoebill stork can reach 5 foot in height and are classified as critically endangered with only 3,300 to 3,500 mature shoebills still living in the wild. In 2009, Zoo Tampa became the first wildlife institution in North America to hatch one of these rare avians outside of their native range. They are often found in areas where the water is poorly oxygenated, as the fish there need to surface for air more frequently, making hunting easier, and they will cool their eggs through egg watering, putting water over their eggs to keep them from overheating in the African sun. Next up is the yard housing okapis, which mark their territory with the tar-like substance produced from scent glands on their feet. These elusive animals earned the nickname Ghost of the Forest, as it wasn't discovered by most of the world until the year 1901. Next up is red river hogs. Male red river hogs will fight by pressing their foreheads together and butting heads, so they have developed special warts on their faces to protect their eyes from the other male's tusks. Piglets will play dead to avoid predation. In the village area across from the beer garden, we find an aviary housing many species of birds, including tills, herons, and hornbills, as well as a blue diker. Lastly, we'll take a brief look at the Expedition Wild Africa Safari Ride. Here, Zoo Tampa research assistants lead guests in an open-air expedition vehicle where we will learn about missions to save wildlife and wild places. And this will conclude our trek through Zoo Tampa's Africa. Thank you for joining me. This is Brad, and I will see you where our adventures take us next. Until next time, safe travels, everyone.